Hi, I'm just going to go through a few of the more common shapes that you'll find in moment of inertia. And uh, probably just the square, triangle, and a circle, maybe even ellipse, but uh, we'll see what we have space for. Well, let's start off. First of all, let's start off with a square. It's always good to start off with something simple. Y and X you will find that uh, if we determine that this is H and this is B then how about right at the centroid that this right here will be X prime and this will be Y prime we have many tabulated values here the inertia around x prime axes is 1 12th base times height cubed. I y prime is going to be 1 12th base cubed height. Then you'll have just about the x axes in general, which we already know, 1 third base times height cubed and then you'll have I about the y-axis and that'll be base cubed height and then you'll have your um, well, we already know the about the polar about the center uh, I mean we know the polar resistance the J for the O, the J for the centroid is going to equal 1 12th base times height and then just base squared plus height squared. And you can determine that just from looking at, um, just from doing the simple math and adding the inertia about the x prime and the inertia about the y prime, adding those two together will give you the same result. Okay, so let's move on to triangles. Moving on to triangles, we have all the same stuff. We'll have h, we'll have our base, is key. Then you'll have the centroid, once again, which will be only one-third of the height from the base. All the same coordinate systems, x and y. And basically these ones are a little bit more simple, but um, x prime, about x prime, is one 36th base times height cubed for just around the x-axis you'll have 1 12th base times height cubed and they only show the base times height uh, or I mean they only show the x-axis um, inertias because this is always based off of um, whichever base you pick and realize that you could pick your base as any three sides so it's just they leave it up to you which side you pick your base but they are not um, it's not like it would be any different if you picked the upper right or the upper left as your base these both would yield the same solution and you would get exact same thing exact same centroid exact same everything so okay then let's move on to circles alright so through a circle I'm not gonna call this a centroid because I get worried when I start drawing um, semicircles I just wanna have a little bit of continuity um, just know that, you know, phi is 2r. 
So the diameter is 2r, so the radius is r. Um, the rotation about the x-axis for these is going to equal um, the same as the rotation around the, the y-axis because they're symmetric. Thus, this will equal one fourth pi r to the fourth. And thus, um, when you solve for the j about the center or the uh, about the origin, we find that, that is just uh, times two, which is one half pi r to the fourth power. Kind of nifty. Okay, so let me just kind of go on to a similar type situation. Okay. Y X zero. Now this is why I wanted to tell you why I label this is the origin because the centroid of the half circle will be right here. I'm not going to go through where all the centroids are. Please refer to the centroid uh, video. But if you do know where the centroids are, um, you know, you can always go through and try to determine where that is. It's not usually normal because people always want to refer right to where O is. But you can always do it. It's not too difficult. Anyway, um, I x, to realize that this is I x, it's also going to equal I y, once again, surprisingly. But if you think about it, all you are doing is you're reducing the material by one half. Because it's half a circle. So, I mean, the inertia, uh, the inertia, the resistance, is going to just decrease by one half. And it's the same thing with J. And I mean, just to just to kind of drive that concept home, if we um, were to look at even something as simple as a quarter circle, you guessed it. It would be almost exactly the same. It would be one sixteenth pi r to the fourth, and j o would be one eighth pi r to the fourth. So nothing too extreme with those. Let's hit up uh, ellipses real quick. If you have this arbitrary ellipse, um, let's just say that we have a perfect coordinate system that's not crooked. You have your height, which is B. You have your length, which is A here. One thing I want you to realize about this is that um, you'll see a, such similar um, equations to a rectangle or whatnot. So pi a b cubed. For i y, for the inertia about y axes, you will have something exactly the same almost. Pi a cubed b. Just a little bit different. And then j o will equal pi a b a squared plus b squared. And I just want you to realize that um, a squared plus b squared, that would be our r squared. So we could have used the r squared as well. But uh, it's best to just keep it in two terms that we don't know. So that way we simplify things out. But um, 
it's it's not too strenuous to do, but I just wanted to kind of show you uh, all the different types. And there are books and pamphlets and just there's just with results, not even how to do them. They have pages and pages, hundreds of pages long on various shapes on how to do um, uh, of results, and it's of quadratic equations and everything. So. Um, some people did their PhD on simple mathematics. But anyway, um, let's do run through a couple examples, and that way we can move on with our lives.